name is Bob Carroll. And a lot of other people don't know who I am either. That's why I carry this. The Radio Shack Battery of the Month Club. Available anywhere. With this, you can get a free battery. You believe it? I don't even. Hi, my name is Bob Carroll, and I'm the Guinness record holder for telling jokes for 24 hours and 5 minutes. You can look it up. It's on page 462 of the Guinness Book of World Records. Not the 1980 version, the 1981 version. And I told jokes that long. Do you believe it? Could anyone possibly do that? No. Well, we're here today to talk about that, and we're also going to show you a few magic tricks. That's right, illusions and magic. Woo! Just like that. Well, there's a gentleman out now, I don't remember his name, but he said he broke my record, and he said he did 27 hours or more of telling jokes nonstop. Well, unfortunately, that record is not true. I still hold the world record. He took a five-minute break in between every hour, and that's not allowed for our category. And also, uh, he was able to uh, read his jokes out of a book. Well, unfortunately, that's not the way you do it. Just memorize it. That's the way I did it. Memorize the whole situation and had to just take notes during the whole setup. Well, we're here at Gaslight Village in Lake George, New York, where I'm currently doing my ventriloquist act and also my magic routines. And I thought I'd show you a little bit about the uh, magic angle of what I do here. And uh, first of all, it always helps to have a magical prop. And this little wrinkled scarf in my pocket is a magical prop. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this scarf disappear. That's right. So somebody out there in TV land yell out any color in the world and I'll change it to it. Somebody yelled out blue. Good, that's the only one I can do. All right, now we're going to take this little yellow scarf and place it through my hand and now it's changed to color blue. Now the hard part to change it back to the original color, yellow. See, I'm colorblind, so it doesn't matter to me which way, one way or the other. Now we'll actually change it now to the color blue. Now, the way we do this is we place it inside the hand, and we have a little man inside there painting this really fast. And when it comes out the other end, of course, it will come out the color blue. You see, like this. I did this trick last week on the radio, and nobody saw how I did it. Now, we'll place it inside the hand, just like this. And of course, when you press it down, just like this, it does come out the color blue, just like that. And that's the way that trick works, just like that. Now. I'm going to show you exactly how this is done. Now, a magician doesn't reveal his secrets, but I have two scarves. <gasps> Does he really? Yes. Now, here we have another scarf in the hand. See, this is the yellow scarf. So we have two scarves. We have the yellow scarf and the blue scarf. I'll place the blue one down there for now. So what I do is I take the yellow scarf, place it inside my hand first, you see, just like this. And, and then uh, I hide it down in there. It's called a secret. And then we take the blue scarf and place the blue scarf in, like this, in the same hand. Now the hard part, of course, is to pull the yellow one down through the bottom after you push the blue one through the top, you see. And then, of course, when the yellow one, of course, come, should have read the directions, it's coming out red here. For you people who have a black and white set, I really feel sorry for you because this trick is terrific. All right, now, now what we're going to do is, we'll, well, here's the, well, it's coming out red, so that's, the, now the hard part is to get rid of the blue one and the yellow one, and that can't be done because that would be magic, and that's what's known as magic. Now, don't applaud, just throw money. Now, friends, we're going to do it again, except uh, we'll do it a little bit differently here. I guess the red one is the only one I have. We'll try to make it completely disappear. Now, the way we do this is we'll place it inside the hand. <laughs> I love this one. We'll place it inside the hand. Now, watch, because they always say a magician makes things go up their sleeve. If we could do that, we wouldn't have to pay the internal revenue service. All right, now, we'll place it inside the hand, and at the count of three, the scarf will completely disappear. Watch carefully. One, two, two and a half, and three, and the scarf does completely disappear. Utterly amazing, yes, but watch, we'll reach in the air, grab it over here, throw it in the hand like this, and it comes back, and that's what's known as magic. The cameraman now is going crazy. He's saying, I can't wait to play this back and see if he really made it disappear. This is not for photography. Everything you see right now in front of your very eyes at home is done by magic. Now, that's what Doug Henning tells me to say every time I perform.
will make it completely disappear this time, but the hard part of the triple bead will make it go up through the arm, down in the stomach, and come back out the mouth at the count of three. Kind of sickening. I bet you people at home are saying, I can't wait to see something like this today. So we'll place it inside the hand, just like this. Make it go up through the arm, just like this. First, you've got to make it disappear, because there it is, in the hand. We'll make it completely disappear, just like this. Now, down in the stomach. But when it gets near the floor area, it's almost a possible to figure out what I'm talking about, because it gets stuck when you hit it. But if I come out through it, the scarf will come out of the mouth. There we go. Kind of sickening, huh? One, two, two and a half, and two. Tastes just like a Big Mac. There it is. How about that? Thank you. Thank you, home audience viewers. As you can tell, there's no, there's no studio audience here, so I have to applaud myself. That looks fantastic, Bob. How did you do that? Well, here's another trick you won't like. An ordinary piece of rope and two ends and a middle, you see? And um, you know when you tie your shoes, you have to tie them in what is known as a shoelace knot, you see? And, uh, of course, you run around and work all day and get it tangled up in what is known as this. Now, this is something you can never get out of. This is called the marriage knot. Unless, of course, you're a magician, you run your hand down like that, and, of course, the knot completely disappears. The other type of knot that everyone knows how to tie is an ordinary square knot. And tying a square knot is a simple thing to do, unless, of course, you're a magician, you can make that completely disappear also. The hardest knot in the world to tie is a knot without letting go of either end. So we'll just do that. Place this hand through here, this hand through here, this hand through here, and throw it over the wrist like that and wind up with a knot in the middle. Knots to you. See, that's what... All right, now, we'll take both ends of the rope and bring up the middle, which is somewhere in between the two ends, and we'll cut the rope in the center just like this, using the scissors. I say scissors because I can't say scissors. These are, might be old jokes to you, but they're new jokes to me. So we'll place them. No, no, well, now we've got two pieces of rope, but one's longer than the other. So we'll just take this piece of rope and pull it down to there. And now we do have two even pieces of rope. We'll bring up all the ends of the rope, just like this. Say the magic words, abracadabra. And by magic, it's back to the way it was before, an ordinary piece of rope. Utterly astounding. Yes, it is. But I've always wondered what it'd be like if we could actually get rid of the ends of the rope. Because if we can get rid of the ends, we can also get rid of the middle. So we'll take the ends and throw them away. And now we have a piece of rope with no ends, no middle, no center, just one continuous piece of rope. But being a magician, you don't even have to use any scissors. Just give it a karate chop, just like that. And by magic, it's back to the way it was before, an ordinary piece of rope. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Now, back to what I'm doing now. Now I'm uh, traveling through the uh, country. We're in the winter in Las Vegas, the fabulous entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas. And uh, mainly working uh, on a TV show pilot for uh, kids these days. And working, of course, in various so small casinos. So, of course, all casinos in Las Vegas are big, but the smaller ones that you rarely hear about is where I'm working and starting out. After we broke the world record in uh, November of 1979, we decided that would be the best thing to do to head for the big time in Las Vegas. Now back to the tricky stuff known as magic. Let's pull this table right over here. Haha, <laughs> we spare no expense on quality props. Now, get rid of this. This is this is the past tense. Here we have three different lengths of rope. We have a long piece of rope and a short piece of rope, and a, a medium-sized piece of rope. All three are different lengths, as anybody can plainly see. The short one, and the medium, and the long. Now, they're all different lengths at one end, but not the other. You see, they're the same here, but they're not down there. So all we have to do now is bring up all the ends of the rope so the ends are even. And if the ends are even, the middles will be the same way. So to prove the point, we bring up one, two, three, four, five, and six ends. And now we do have three even pieces of rope at the ends, but not in the middle. So all we, because, because we still have the short piece, the medium size, and the extra long, you see. But now, if we just stretch out the ropes a little bit, we should have three even pieces of rope, just like, just like this. Make sure they're all even, 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 all right. So we do have rope number one, and rope number two, and rope number three. 
But of course, if a magician doesn't want him that way, he brings up all the ends of the rope, takes out the short piece of rope, the medium size, and the extra long, and they're back to the way they were before. Thank you. Listen to that applause. Isn't this fun? All right. <laughs> okay. Now, we have one, one grand finale. As every magic show has to have a grand finale, I brought my own inside this little bag. Inside here, this little bag has my grand finale. So let me just get rid of these ropes. And this is where you get to see the cameraman. Ha ha ha. Watch this. Because inside this bag, we have a mirror. Now, a mirror is an illusion in itself. See the camera? Okay. The cameraman looking through the camera? There we go. You see, a mirror is actually an illusion. It's actually a magic trick. Actually, what you see in here does not exist. It's just an illusion. And it is a solid mirror, completely solid. No holes on either side. This is actually a solid mirror. In fact, it's even thick. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the mirror down inside this little frame here. And we're going to place the whole thing inside this wonderful cloth bag that my mother-in-law knitted for this wonderful illusion. We'll place it down inside the bag, just like this, all right, and uh, seal the bag up. Now, as we all know, it's still solid. As we all know, it's impossible to make a solid object go through another solid object. But we're going to try to take this knitting needle and place it through the solid mirror. Watch carefully. Here we go. Place it down through the mirror, just like this. And there it goes, through the mirror. But as you say, it's impossible. Let's try it again. Through the mirror again. And one more time, right down through the mirror. But if you want to see something even more crazy, watch as I actually bend the mirror. That's the hard part. Here we go. The Twilight Zone. It's actually bending. Wait a second. Now, we all know that's impossible. Let's take it one more time. Right through the mirror, just like this. And as I said, we all know it's impossible to make one solid object go through another solid object, but actually we did penetrate a solid mirror, just like that. Woo! And there we go. All right. Now that was the grand finale of the show, and we hope that you enjoyed it. And here we are from Adirondack Portraits, and we hope that you enjoyed it and had a real good time. Now, my name is Bob Carroll, and for you people at home who would like to see me on the Johnny Carson Show in four weeks, then please write them and let them know. We thank you very much, and we hope that you had a good time. Bye-bye for now.